Okay. Yep. Oh, thank you for nice. <laughs> yeah, thanks for nice, wonderful introduction. And uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, uh, my name has been slightly changed. So, but the content is completely the same. So, uh, my new title is Strong Calabi Dream Structure of Bot Manifolds. And uh, as a final speaker of this conference, uh, firstly, I really would like to appreciate uh, the organizer, uh, Professor Masuda and Professor Kuroki, and also uh, young person who <laughs> kindly support our conference. And uh, so let's thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I want to uh, concentrate on my mathematics, uh, so suddenly I forget to thank <laughs> the organizer. So I just uh, thank you in advance. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. <laughs> and uh, so from now on, uh, I want to uh, discuss about uh, uh, some bottle structure, uh, which has a very nice uh, parameter because my major is uh, <clears throat> Kera geometry. And uh, so uh, throughout my talk, uh, we assume that X is a compact Kera manifold with uh, some compact uh, Kera metrics. And uh, uh, what? Uh, what? No problem. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, X uh, and N is a uh, complex dimension. And uh, generally, uh, we have three types of uh, night metrics. And uh, we say that this compact Terra manifold is uh, the most famous one is uh, actually Terra Einstein matrix. So, simplicity, I will denote. <clears throat> this guy as K, the initial of Kera Einstein. And the uh, second example is a constant of scalar coverage Kera matrix. And for the simplest here, I, we will call this guy as a CFC here. <clears throat> and uh, the difference. The definition of Kira Einstein is uh, the width curvature is proportional to omega. And this shear is called the Einstein constant. And technically, we can normalize this constant shear with one zero negative ones. And uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, one of the special case. And the second uh, type of CFCK metric is actually uh, the uh, trace, <coughs> trace part of uh, which, uh, which curvature is, uh, gives the stellar curvature. And this S omega denotes the stellar curvature. And this color curvature is constant, then we call uh, such compact Kera manifold is CSCK manifold. And the final example is uh, extremer Kera matrix. So that we will denote this guy as extra care. And this X to K is actually uh, omega attain the critical point of some function, which is called the Calabi function. Oh, oh. See, Calabi function is just defined by 
an integration over this compact general manifold. And S omega is this color curvature. And where to this gives the volume form of this compact scalar manifold. And so <clears throat> technically, if we consider uh, this scalar Einstein case, then uh, <clears throat> automatically the uh, scalar curvature of scalar uh, Einstein metric is constant. Meanwhile, if we consider about the constant scalar curvature case, so this gives a constant here, so that automatically this attains a critical point. So what I mean is important. Uh, so definition itself is not so important for us today, but what I want to say is, Kira Einstein is a special case of CSC theory. And also, CHTK is a special case of extrema. I'm sorry, I don't know. Why this Ah, uh, this, uh, if this is a constant, then this would be a, a, a constant here, and this would be a boring point. And automatically, this attains a critical point of this function. Because Kara is my car and CL omega is the real part. Ah, yeah, yes. So that it is always constant. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, because, yeah, maybe. If it's only like constant, why is it? Ah, yeah, uh, maybe uh, uh, my explanation is very wrong. So uh, we consider about a function of two. Uh, this pitch represents uh, this one. And the Kalabi functional is just uh, defined in the space of this one, and the H omega is this one. And uh, so precisely, this is the, uh, uh, sorry, this sphere, this potential is uh, this S omega sphere. sphere. So then, uh, <coughs> Then we consider about uh, in this class, so on, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, move this here. Then uh, we consider about the critical function. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, I just omitted that detail. Yeah, of course, uh, of course. <laughs> so it's not uh, uh, not a straight to four conclusions. And uh, uh, yeah, and today, uh, what I would like to introduce is. Uh, uh, one of the notion which was uh, introduced by Chen Chen, uh, two Chinese researchers, and the Xu Chen Chen and Jin Lu Chen in 2021. And uh, Xu Chen Chen is, uh, yeah, in fact, my former supervisor when I, when I was in China uh, in Huawei. And, uh, after that, I moved to uh, Shanghai. And uh, at that time, my hosting advisor was Liu Jie, who is working on the water manifold and the political politics. And uh, <clears throat> what they introduced is if X is a compact scalar manifold, then uh, we call that X is, uh, so in the title, Halabi Dream Manifold. And from now on, we just say this Halabi Dream Manifold as CDM Manifold, CDM for simplicity. And the definition of Calabi manifold is 
if com this compact keramine it was adding it the uh, extremal keramatory uh, in each character. Uh, that for uh, this this radio omega denotes the characters. And if each killer class admits an extremal killer, then we call such compact manifold as CDM uh, in omega. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, one of the main objects of today. Uh, but uh, so, uh, definition is very simple, but uh, of course, so we wonder uh, what kind of compact scalar manifold is uh, this kind of CDM. And uh, uh, this represents, uh, I, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yes. And uh, one of the typical example is uh, toric projective toric silence. And uh, especially here, any small projective toric silence. Of course, there are many examples of CDM. And one example is uh, uh, this lower dimensional toric variety. And this X is CDM. Why? Because uh, one thing is uh, we can directly show that P2 projective frame and the uh, heritable surface. This is a, a case here to look at FK. And these two guys are CDM. And originally, this was shown by Palabi himself. Uh, so each Kera class of here to look at this admits are extreme appearance. So this is proved by Palabi himself in 2082. In his celebrated paper. And uh, this, meanwhile, we can uh, get to any projective toric surface by taking the blow up of this feature or series of surface. So by taking the appropriate uh, point of the blow up, so we are able to get solid. Uh, this smooth projective surface. And uh, this is the classical classification of toric surface. And uh, we can find this statement in Fulton's textbook. And uh, Finally, we apply uh, Alex Packard Singer's argument to this object so that after treating the uh, grow ups, there is the uh, extreme. So after taking the grow up, there is the still extremal keramatoids. So, what I mean is, if we start with the extremal care, and taking the blow up here. Then, uh, in general, of course, we do not know this guy admits an extreme killer or not. But uh, Alex Packard and Singer's argument guarantee that they are still uh, extreme killer in sufficiently small killer class. So that's why. Uh, every uh, uh, pro smooth projective toric surface is a carabidonin manifold. And uh, this is a uh, yeah, yes. So that uh, for any keratron 
of H2 X R, there is an extreme occurrence. And this is the, uh, one of the dominant examples of CDL. Uh, but in three dimensional case, uh, still there are another uh, interesting examples of CDL, and especially. Uh -huh. so, any Kera class. class, yes. Kera manifold, yes. Kera metric is already. Kera metric is already. So, yeah. so that omega, it seems omega is already determined. Uh-huh. So why, why, why did you say any? Ah, uh, uh, so if we say that the uh, Calabidolin manifold, we consider about any uh Kera class. For example, if we start from P2, so uh this is corresponding to the uh, triangle in general. And uh, so in the anti-canonical class, the first chunk class case is the, this kind of reflexive quality of arise. But as and of course in this case there is a to be study that way on the Kera instance. And we also have to consider about the duration of this particle uh, if we consider about carabidolin. So even if there is an extreme Kera class in a fixed, fixed one, that is not enough. We have to consider about any Kera class. So for example, the duration of this. This is the contact line for the compact line for the all Kera, all Kera class. Kera yes. yes. So that uh, first we fix the uh, Kera class, but next we have to move and uh, change all of the Kera class. So what is the X is the contact manifold, which admits Kera metric. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because uh, this is, uh, 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 yes, yes. Exactly. Do you have a complex structure? Uh, fix a complex structure, yeah, it is uh, also uh, fixed, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. And uh, yeah, thanks. And uh, uh, so that uh, technically, uh, this is not uh, our, uh, uh, this is not uh, easier to distinguish whether a uh, given compact manifold is a current dream or not. But in other words, this gives a very strict restriction because this is a very strong assumption. And uh, another uh, interesting example is some of Toric Fan 3 4. Finally, is the anti canonical boundary is ample. And the uh, <coughs> final three for the R CDL. And for example, uh, there are 18 classes of the final three for it, and the fit was classified by Victor Butler and Watanabe Watanabe. And uh, yeah. Uh, Maybe this is uh, well known and uh, used in mirror symmetry. And uh, uh, there are four classes of type B. And especially uh, uh, this guy uh, has a picard number two. And uh, but the important thing is that this type B, four classes are expressed as a projective bundle. And for example, uh, type B for final three for can be expressed as a P1 bundle over P, P2, O plus O2, uh, O plus ON. But the final condition uh, corresponding to N is one or two in this case. And uh, another example is uh, P2 bundle over P1, O plus O plus O1. This is also a toric final three force. And these types of especially ruled manifold Ruled manifold has a very nice symmetry and uh, technically it's more easy to construct extreme Kera metrics. And uh, this type is already known that uh, 
examples of parameter manifold. And this is due to the work of Zhuang in 95 and Andrew Huang published in Osaka Journal in 94. And uh, another one is uh, Apostle and Cardemang and uh, Paul Gardeson, ACG, and Tonyasen Friedman. So <laughs> let me say, right, just initial because two long names, ACGTF. So that they extended Juan and Juan to the art in the public pictures. And, and these, these four guys are type of B manifold. And, but another example is also very interesting for us. That is the type shear, uh, toric famous report. So that there are totally five classes of type shears. Among 18 classes, five classes are Uh, uh, five classes are type T, and this is uh, nothing but the bottom manifold. It is called bottom funnels. And this bottom structure has been detected by uh, yeah, Professor Masuda and uh, you, uh, Lee, Professor Lee, and uh, yeah, and uh, topologist. And uh, this uh, type T is especially a uh, typical example is uh, P1 times F1, first Hilsburg sound. And since this P1 uh, admits an extremal, and this F1 also admits an extremal matrix, so that uh, naturally this gives a uh, product matrix, then this would be a uh, <clears throat> calabidoline manifold. And another description, of this final bottom manifold is, for example, uh, P1 band over P1 times P1, so that this is O11. And uh, this is also an example of a parabitary manifold that each killer class admits an extremal killer. And uh, this was proved by, uh, yeah, so Boyer, Charles Boyer, and uh, the second one, uh, card bank, and fourth author, Jonathan Friedman in ADB mass. <clears throat> so in 2019, so very recently. And they detected that the uh, <clears throat> this ACDTF argument can work to this bottom manifold. And eventually, uh, this type of toric funds report would be CDM. Uh, but today, uh, what we want to consider about is uh, not extremal, but constant for curvature. So that this was uh, defined by uh, Martinez Garcia. Garcia in 2021. So uh, he defines that a compact Kera manifold. So this X is a strong parabidory manifold. So in the title, I just write strong. So this is the definition of a strong parabidory manifold. If, uh, okay, move to that. So if this compact Kera manifold admits a uh, CSCK metric in each Kerak class. So that's a special class of extremal Kerak metrics. So that any Kerak class admits a CSCK matrix.
in this omega. So uh, this is the definition of strong curvy dream manifold. And uh, he just defined this notion. And what uh, Martinez Garcia showed was uh, we consider about uh, strong any smooth projective rational surface. Each has a strong <coughs> during Arabi structures, SCD surface. Then, what kind of <coughs> surface will appear? Actually, he classified uh, any strong Karabi dream surface in the rational varieties. So that the resulting manifold will be a P1 times P1 and T2. Only these candidates will appear. So technically, uh, what we want to do is which types of generalization in general <coughs> higher dimensional case. So now uh, we can consider about a very natural problem. Uh, yeah, building up on the work of Martinez Garcia. So <coughs> natural problem is higher dimensional analog of this thing. So firstly, for example, we simply consider about the, uh, if X is a smooth projective, rational surface, then what kind of, uh, of course, we assume that strong character in mind for <coughs> smooth projective <coughs> rational SCDM. Then what kind of uh, variety will appear? Now, personally, I suppose this is a direct product of P1 and Pn, but uh, we do not know. And uh, so this is a natural question. And also we are able to, but uh, in general, uh, this problem is very difficult to deal with so that we can just relax the, or rather uh, we can consider about more special things. So that what about toric is a rational, a rational variety. So that what about a smooth project with toric SCDM, then what kind of yeah, uh, variety will appear? So uh, this is also a very interesting problem. And the third one is, but still this is very different. And third one is, then what about the bottom manifold? And this is our assumption. So actually, uh, if we think about any smooth projective bot strong color in mind for then what kind of uh, variety will appear? And uh, uh, today's main statement is now I am able to state. So, so what I want to say is if we think about this problem and this is the joint work with uh, Kento Fujita who is working in Osaka University. And, and Ono and Osano. So the statement is completely the same. Uh, no, not completely, but almost the same. But the approach is uh, totally different. And with Fujita, uh, we consider about Algebra geometrical proof. So this is the first approach. And uh, this, uh, so this is a very technical argument, but the statement is 
more strong because we can think about any characteristic case, not only a characteristic zero, but a positive characteristic, it works. And in this second theorem, uh, we consider about the convex geometrical argument. And this is more elementary and a simple argument, but it only works uh, characteristic zero case because we consider about some derivative of invariant, but especially k or c is enough. And what uh, we are able to say is the statement is if we think about a state and bottom manifold, so strongly Calabi Dorium bottom manifold, then what kind of variety will appear. Actually, we classified it. Then X must be direct product of P1. <laughs> so due to the conclusion, so this is uh, everything <laughs> what I would like to yeah, share right now. And uh, the idea is very simple, but uh, especially, uh, and today uh, we will follow the second approach so this gives a very uh, uh, simple combinatorial picture. And uh, I believe that it's more easy to imagine what happened in our discussion. But uh, here, uh, this is the main theorem. And the uh, idea is uh, very simple. Why? Because uh, we just consider about the both manifold chaos. And uh, both manifold is a sequence of the P1 vibration. So that each stage has a P1, so that the corresponding polytope is kind of yeah, cuboid. So that's why the, the figure of a polytope is very clear and very beautiful. <laughs> so, so kind of like this. And this kind of polytope will appear. And uh, what we are considering, so we consider about this kind of two boy in the bottom situation. And we consider about this SC here assumption. This means that a uh, corresponding invariant, uh, which is called the Donald stack invariant, I will uh, explain soon. But if this Donald invariant is zero, technically this corresponding to the body center of this point. But oh, our assumption is not only this Kera class, but just perturbing Kera class, according to, for example, just to, yeah, we consider about the parallel transformation of uh, this polytope along this path. And uh, this gives another Kera class, although the base manifold is the same. And uh, yeah, as the Professor Masuda just pointed out, this Polytop also admits a uh, CSCK. This means that the corresponding body center must be varnish. So that even after we part having this part, then uh, this polytop also has zero body centric pictures. So eventually, what kind of polytop will appear? Such kind of polytop must be exactly cubic. So this is a naive here, idea of how to get this statement. So the corresponding toric variety is a, a direct product of P1. But the idea is uh, very simple, but of course we have to justify how to you know, get to this kind of cubic from these assumptions. And, uh, uh, how many minutes uh, do, I, do I have? 25. 25. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's enough. <laughs> and uh, from now on, uh, I will switch to the proof of uh, how to justify this argument. And uh, before going to the yeah, next chapter, if you have some question or comment, please let me know. Yeah. Uh, sorry. What do you mean by very Ah, sorry. This origin. Ah, 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 this means that the difference between the polytope 
help is give uh, body center of the polyto and uh, sorry maybe the body center of the boundary of the polyto facet of the polyto and body center of polyto itself is equal to zero technically. Uh, I will define explicit the definition of DFC, DFC. And of course, yeah, if we translate this point of the body center will be changed. But uh, what we are considering about the difference between uh, this uh, boundary facet, uh, body center of the boundary and point of itself. So that uh, this will be zero if the, this uh, DFP condition. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, so I first uh, I first would like to uh, introduce the sketch of the proof of our discussion. And there are totally six steps to uh, solve these naive ideas. And uh, If time permitted, I would like to check the uh, notation of the bottom manifold. But before think about that point, uh, I firstly <laughs> would like to discuss about the main argument point of this proof, combinatorial uh, argument, combinatorial proofs. And technically, the main key element is uh, Brown Minkowski inequality in the convex geometry. Uh, firstly, we will start from the stage and bottom line point. So this Xn is a stage and bottom line point. <coughs> But we assume that strongly colored during bottom manifold. And especially in our case, <coughs> uh, that, uh, so uh, since bottom manifold is a uh, uh, projective uh, to, smooth toric variety, so <coughs> it inherits the complete form which is denoted by sigma. And uh, uh, this P3 sigma denotes the primitive collection of associated funds. Of the funds. So that in, in the morning session, <clears throat> yeah, Hiraku Abel kindly expressed their uh, uh, cohomology of uh, this kind of projective toric uh, surface. And in that literature, and this primitive collection gives the uh, information of cohomology. And uh, <clears throat> in our case, both manifold uh, is gives the primitive collection, which is a pair of two primitive normals. So, and there are totally QN primitive normal vector denoted by U1, UB1 to UN, BN. And each pair gives a P1 vibrations. And in our strategy, uh, and here we just denote the B1, this B1 to BN is a standard basis of RBN. We didn't ask you. And uh, we also consider about this uh, UN to BN as a primitive relation, which is given by zero. Because uh, this UN BN gives a uh, stage one bottom manifold. So stage one bottom manifold is always P1 by its definition. So that uh, this is a trivial 
、P1。あの、for the no, for the later you, I just denote this UN as a script bold B2 and minus one. And this guy as a uh, B2 and. So that this is a zero 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 to one. And this guy can be right up zero 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 to minus nine in our case. And, and in this situation, uh, we consider about the layer. So this denotes the uh, all of the one dimensional cone in this complete fan sigma. And uh, here is a row i, two n rays in this polytopal fans. Each, uh, each ray has uh, this uh, normal vector, <laughs> primitive normal vector vi. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just to be sure, I uh, just to demonstrate two uh, Hilsbruch surfaces. We only consider about, uh, in the Hilsbruch surface case, we consider about V1 and V2 and U1 and U2. And uh, this one dimensional cone corresponding to the uh, torus invariant divisor in the Bottom manifold, H sigma. So there is a one to one correspondence in a toric dictionary here. So that we can you know, this corresponding torus invariant Cartier divisor by DIs. And after taking this, uh, we can uh, take the polarizations. Using Z coefficient. So, if we denote that L is a very ample line bundle with AI to DIs, and here AI is a Z coefficient, and this gives a very ample line bundle. Over x, and of course uh, we are able to associate the moment point of, of this toric varieties, uh, uh, rather this polarized toric manifold. That is, p is just given by the x. So this is uh, in MR side. <clears throat> so dual space of the fan, and X and uh, we denote by bi is larger or equal to ai. And here i is starting from oh, 1 to 2n. And here, uh, board x is just a meaning of coordinates x1 to xn. Kind of like this. And then uh, uh, we assume that at the stage one, so uh, there is a P1, that's why this UN plus BN gives a uh, zero. So this means that uh, there is at least one pair of parallel facets. So this parallel process describes the stage one bottom manifold. So that's why our combinatorial object can be written as just like this picture. So we just think about the height as an XN coordinate. So if this we take this x down as the height, and then uh, corresponding point of years, technically, we can have this kind of figures. 
and you. And this is, oh, we assume that here is a height S, and this is a height, this is a S, and <clears throat> the bottom is height T for some technical reasons. And this kind of cuboid, now we are considering a bars. Then uh, we consider about the size of this point of at the stage, not, sorry, height lambda. So this, uh, so hyperplane cutting at the height lambda gives the slice increase. And like this, and, and like this. So that cutting phase, there is a point of Q lambda. Okay. And the bottom is, of course, sorry, uh, top is a QS, point of QS. And uh, for the moment, we will denote this by D. Uh, and the bottom is also point of QT. And we also denote this guy have shield. And since this bottom and the top are uh, parallel, so that uh, we consider about the situation that QS and QT in a parallel, parallel hyperplane. But of course, we do not know the, uh, the, the rounding area, uh, this facet uh, parallel or not. But eventually, we want to say that each facets are also parallel. This is what we want to justify. And, uh, 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 and now, we just consider about the, uh, this kind of pillar. So, so that this pillar is we consider about infinitely uh, from negative infinity to positive in, in, infinity. So that this is a pillar including original point of pier. So that our polyto, uh, which corresponding to the starting bottom manifold is nothing about uh, these guys. And this is what we are thinking about. And in our situations, uh, this here is also denoted as the intersection of this pillar cutting height T to S. So that if we think about, if we just um, cutting from this pillar, uh, we are able to get the uh, <coughs> convex point of the bottom manifold. <laughs> so this is our, our second step. And now we want to show that this, uh, from our assumption, this will be this one. <laughs> and, uh, how to justify this? And we will just use that gram Minkowski equal here, uh, which is a very classical convex geometrical technique. And just, uh, uh, just uh, I was asked, uh, what is the meaning of body center? So body center is so to call the Donaldson stacking variance. And this is just given by the difference of the volume PTS and the body center of the boundary of this polygon. And we consider about the X and coordinates with respect to the height. And this stigma is the uh, Euclidean volume form with respect to this boundary. And we consider about the difference of this volume, boundary of the volume, and uh, 
by center of this corridor, time radius. And, and this X, this B, is a Euclidean volume of this corridor. And technically, this part is most hard to compute if we consider about the given point of years, uh, for example, K table or it doesn't the CSCK matrix, uh, we have to compute this kind of invariant. And uh, especially in Korea, uh, there are some specialists <laughs> who are uh, calculating this part of for solid final threefold. And uh, of course, we need some computational techniques. And so it's almost impossible to compute this by hand. Unless as nice that you are very super familiar with this object. <laughs> but uh, maybe three-dimensional is still very hard. Well, uh, I, I think Yes. Ah, uh, sigma, uh, sorry. V sigma, yeah. Uh, v sigma means, V sigma means, uh, to, for, for example, uh, if we consider about the facets, facet is uh, facet of the polyto, for simply we will write P. And uh, this facet is given by the Xn, uh, equal to here. So, and we consider about uh, in this case, dx1, sorry, dx1 to dx2 and minus one and dxn equal, so this will be, and so in this facet, this is associated. That's why we consider about this as a V sigma, or rather V sigma F, so that uh -huh. it comes from the defining the equation of the boundaries. And thank you. And, uh, sorry. and uh, this is so to call a Donaldson from stack invariance. Oh. But in other words, if you can successfully compute this kind of object still, uh, this is very interesting in differential geometry. So that if some young guys are very interested in this kind of computation, you can find it. Uh, maybe interesting. Uh, yeah, mathematical phenomena will appear. And so this is a, and this is called the Donaldson stack invariant along the height. And this is a second step. And uh, sorry, so that from here we can see that the second step. And and third step means uh, we consider that uh, from our assumptions, uh, this corresponding invariant, this will be zero. <clears throat> so <clears throat> from strong curvy green <clears throat> structure, uh, we assume that this <clears throat> Donaldson stack invariant is zero, DFTS. Not only a fixed TS, but also if we perturb TS along X and axis, all of DFTS must be zero. For any TS. So <clears throat> then, by taking the derivative of this Donaldson stack invariant, we can conclude that each slice appearing here, this any <laughs> so slicing volume is constant. Even though it might change the <clears throat> figure, the volume must be constant. Possibly we can prove this remnants by taking the derivative of this Donaldson stack invariant. As long as uh, this each point of has the same dimension. And then we apply the transfer Brown Minkowski inequality to this point. Namely, uh, with a possibly. Uh, we may assume that uh, 
this uh, bottom and the top are uh, given by t equal zero and s equal one. But for the technical reason, we just take the bottom is given by just uh, uh, the z z frame and the top is the uh, top is given by z equal one. Then uh, we apply the brown Minkowski inequalities. But what is the brown Minkowski inequalities? Uh, this is uh, proved by Minkowski in 1953. So we just apply this classical argument. So, if we write down the explicit statement of this inequality, so firstly, we consider about the two convex bodies. In Ave, the Euclidean phase has been given here. <clears throat> then, if the functional Uh, yeah, it's a functional F, uh, which is the function between R to R. So here, R is here, and uh, we consider about the volume of the slicing of QT. And so anyone is not strictly concave. So uh, there are totally three situations. And here QT is just given by the Minkowski sum of Q polytope top T plus T here. And here C D is in this picture, we just put the bottom and the top. And we consider about the volume QT of this polytope. And Consider about one over n, and if and we change the parameters here for each stage, and if this is not so strictly concave, then we have totally three uh, cases, and we just consider about each case is uh, appropriate. Sorry. One. 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 Uh, one. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this one minus since Maria, yeah, my figure is very bad. <laughs> yeah, one minus t c plus t d. Minkowski sum exactly. So, and thank you. And uh, uh, but I I'm afraid that my time is ten minutes or. One minute, sorry. <laughs> so, so, so I have to. Uh, so I uh, there is uh, one or two, but these two cases are inappropriate for me. <laughs> so that let sorry. So that I will just state third third one. So in our situation, uh, so that our. <laughs> Uh, volume Q lambda is constant. Of course, this is not a strictly concave. So that, but one and two is not appropriate. We can check directly. <laughs> so third, uh, so remaining third case is our case, namely uh, uh, interior of these two convex bodies are uh, <clears throat> no empty, and also there is. So C and D are homothetic in a world. So that there is a R in my sense, such that C equal R here, part there. So, uh, so that this gives a homothetic situation. Uh, so, and this is the uh, fourth step. And uh, fifth step is by from Minkowski inequality and our lemmas, we can successfully show that propositions. 
So that if the Nardason stacking invariant is here, uh, zero for any tiers, for any tiers, then uh, each slot has is uh, maybe I don't want to. Yeah, each slice is have not only the same volume, but also the congruent to each other's because uh, it can be denoted by this, and R would be one from our argument. So that for any parameter ui in between the range t and s, and for each slice gives the congruent picture. So that eventually, so what we want to see is this kind of polytope will appear in our argument. So that the bottom is t and the top is s, and each slice has the same features and rightness. And kind of rightness. So that um, this gives the QU2, QU1, and um, this red part gives the QU2. So uh, eventually, uh, this gives the splitting of the polytope because our polytope is here, but uh, this uh, proposition says that uh, this polytope splitting to the base polytope and the fiber polytope so that uh, uh, we are able to say that P, our point of P called PDS, can be expressed as a base point of Q and fiber for TS. And this base point of gives another uh, okay. <clears throat> both from Calabidolin both manifold. Then, Last we will give the induction so that finally uh, we will get the original HCDL bottom manifold can be splitting into the P1. And the inductive argument is we just use the inductions. And so, yeah, since I have no time, I, uh, I will omit uh, this argument first, but this is a simple uh, <clears throat> observation. And then we finally say that our manifold must be the direct product of P1. And uh, okay, I would like to stop here and thank for your attention. Yep. Uh, yeah. So you are considering only the color class, which is T invariant, right? T equivalent, yeah, exactly. So is the same, the same, the same, the invariant color class equals the zero color class? Uh, Toric case, uh, yeah, like philosophically, it is, yes, I, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, we, in toric case, we only consider about the T invariant Kera class and the T invariant Kera metric. And uh, yeah, this is the definition of the uh, uh, HCDR. The extremal color uh, Yes, yes, yes. Especially in general negotiation, we also have to consider about all of the, not only, not only T equivalent, but also uh, other parts. Yeah, but uh, yes, <laughs> you're right. But uh, yeah, in total equation, you know, we always consider about the uh, T invariant. The key. So your theorem is for some T. Yeah, yeah, it, yes, you're right. Yeah, we only consider about the T invariant Kera class and all of the T invariant. Isn't it about the Kera metric and, and to make a this invariant? Can you, if you integrate, integrate uh, 
Ah, uh, for one. So if you have a parameter, it may not be fluorescent light. Ah, okay. So you integrate, integrate it. over this time. Uh, integrate. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, 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 over the compact source. Ah, compact, uh, I see, I see. Make omega, uh, make, make the invariant. Uh huh. It, if it starts with the Kera metric or Kera form, uh -huh. and it is still Kera metric. It must, and uh, this is the, uh, as far as I know, this is a classical argument of uh, beta gyramine and uh, Abreu, yeah, detected it. It starts with uh, not necessary force invariant Kera metric. Uh -huh. We just take it to the or the form. Yeah. Then the flow is a classic. Oh, uh, I see. Uh -huh. and, and then uh, it is enough to consider about the okay, I, I see. Should we? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, since uh, uh, this is a uh, yeah, technical year, you mean and the obvious classical argument, and uh, they also consider about the peak variant, and Donaldson also do that. Yeah, it comes from that observation. Well, I've seen uh, I see, I see. Uh huh, thank you. Uh, so yep. In your conference later, ah. the volumes are the same, right? Volume. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, these two guys have yeah. the same volume. Yes. Same volume. Yes. But it may be possible that if uh, the two is a type of the rectangle, then this is getting larger, uh -huh. and the length is getting smaller. So that's. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, so. <laughs> Uh, this kind, and so it, it shrinks to the one point, and uh, for example, this kind of, and uh, this this kind of one. Uh, I mean, the, the rectangle, the rectangle, the shape of rectangle. Uh, the, the one line. Is, but yeah, the length becomes smaller, but uh, uh -huh. this. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and, uh, this one and uh, this one have the same volume, but ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This kind of situation might happen. So, but the, that never happens is what we showed in the propositions uh, because due to the, this conditions, this guarantee that this kind of, even though, uh, yeah, even though this kind of, Situation might happen in general, uh, but uh, so actually we just uh, yeah divide uh, this kind of phenomenon never happened from that assumption. And uh, yeah, this is uh, our main attachment point. But I'd like to tell. You. Thank you. Okay. And your last formula with integrals. Uh, I just made, want to make sure uh, this was the formula. You integrate some like some polynomial over the polygon when you define this domain so ah uh, yeah 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 uh -huh. so i guess that there is some general technique how you can uh, integrate every polynomial over a polytop uh, using some sort of localization formula like instead of integration you can use some in uh, over vertices i see uh, you mean oira macronian formula or uh, uh, no. so, so sure that uh, something localization yeah some sort of localization okay. instead of Integrating uh, a polynomial over the polynomial, uh, you just take some sum of some rational. Are you mean the lattice point of the polynomial? Look at this point. Just vertices. Oh, really? Ah, but but it's only part of the Yeah, six point. Ah, twelve pixel point. Ah, so yes, yes, I see. So maybe we can omit such kind of. Yeah, Complicated. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, comment. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. Since that integration is yeah very technical, <laughs> that if we can omit that point, it's very helpful. So, yeah, I'm very glad to hear that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
opinions as properly inherited by words. Uh-huh. Faces. Faces. Uh-huh. 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 Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah, sorry. Uh, faces of the portal. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. For a project. Uh huh. Also, I think that. Uh, really great. Uh, uh yeah, Carab doing my part. Uh, is it true that all the varieties respond to the faces of this sort of uh. Uh huh. Um, so you are using induction. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think so. So if you have a carabidoin, carabidoin, manifold, uh huh, strong carabidoin manifold. Yeah, it's. M, M is a string from three, three, yeah, money point. M is a strong, a satisfied a strong variety. Uh huh. And you look at the team, four team, sub money point. Ah, 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 Maybe that's true, I think. So, so if, if this is true, and uh, if you have a specification for surfaces, they are just products of the surface. Uh, it's really true, basically. Uh, first angular forms, right? Yeah. Uh, but you're going to combinatorial surface. Uh huh. Product. Just so sort of. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, but this P1 vibration might not be the Karami dream manifold. So the upper and the bottom and the two facets might be the Karami dream, but this direction is not necessarily Karami dream. But yeah, we have to say that your yeah, uh, corresponding part of is the uh, entire figure. So I'm not sure this oh, simple argument will work or not. Um, yeah, but interesting. Yeah, so, so that you saw that, uh, yeah, this could not be true in general. And so, even though, yeah, if there is so torus invariant divisor, might not be a SCD. Yeah, yeah sure. Differentiation. Uh huh. Or another picture. Where is volume? Volume polynomial. Uh, can you express this chart? Uh, 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 the chart. Uh, Very much here. Over the. Oh, polyto. Uh, what's what's the other thing? Or shifting faces. Ah, yeah, 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 just right. yeah, sliding. Oh. Ah, I, I, I suppose the only volume that is not easier to describe it. Yeah, because more important things is a body center of the polyter. And the body center actually describes a, a, a metric information. And the volume is, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, that's not enough information. So. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. So, uh, the point to point to some three was over. So, uh, I want to thank for all uh, speakers for giving uh, very interesting talks and uh, for all audience and uh, participants. So I would like some for all of you. So <laughs> uh, probably the next year uh, we'll uh, join the uh, December conference. Yeah, uh, we'll yeah. Combine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, conference, conference. so it will be more wider. 
So, at the time, the organizers are Hirakuabe and Ishida. So, as the conference was over, so please enjoy the night of Osaka. Thank you very much. I <laughs> <laughs>